legendary stage and screen actor who has a new memoir out today called Making It So. Please welcome my captain, my captain, <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart. Patrick. <laughs> no, 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 Patrick, that'll do. You don't have to do the sir part. Okay. Is it not required. Okay. <laughs> but you do have to bow every time you speak to him. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for bringing I would that not up. let her fail. You've been doing your research. I have. Yeah, yeah. You've received many offers <laughs> from publishers over the years to write your memoir. But I you have. turned them down. Well, Why? I, I had no time. Um, I, 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 I love my job. I always have, and working, 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 and it, I, it sometimes costs me, particularly in my, in my family life, it yeah. costs me, because I wasn't there. Yeah. I was working. And, and then I had, no, I had to say, I have no time. I can't write a book. And this time, my agent, Carter, called me and said, look, Patrick, there's no work. This was COVID, oh. right oh. at the start of COVID. There's no work. Nobody's going to be offering you work. You're not going to be working at all. Give it a shot. 464 like... pages later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Incredible. Well, you had a you had a rough a rough childhood, from what I understand, and you grew up poor in Northern England in the 40s. Your father was off to war. He was very poor. There wasn't even a toilet in the house. Mm -hmm. And and when your father returned, you write that he was a weekend alcoholic. <clears throat> which is an alcoholic, whether it's on the weekend or anyplace else, um, that he physically abused your mother, yeah. and that you say it's taken decades of psychoanalysis to cope with the violence and the shame of your childhood. You had nothing to be ashamed of. Yes, I know I was not responsible, but it is something that happens with young people, with yes. children. Mm -hmm. They feel themselves yeah. to be guilty yeah. of yeah. causing something. It ought to be better, and if I were better, it would be. Um. Yeah. And that's the difficulty. Yeah. But oh. the first five years of my life were bliss because I had no father. He was away yeah. in the Second World War. Yeah. <clears throat> I was born in 1940. He went to war in 1939. I actually very recently did some calculation. And I think it's very possible that I was conceived the night before he went to war. Wow. I think so. It would fit in entirely. Wow. And then... Well, one for the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was this kind of show. It is. <laughs> now you know. It's the now I know. <laughs> you, you got me. I'm sorry, my voice has got very squeaky. I think it must be stress. You joined the prestigious Royal Shakespeare Company in 1966, spending 14 years as a full-time member. And we have a picture of you playing Oberon in a uh, 1977 production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. And this photo That's has gone really viral, great. and I can't understand why. <laughs> uh, but um, you had said at one point you never thought of yourself as handsome. No. After seeing that picture? <laughs> well, my body was handsome, but then it was very rare that people saw my body in that context. <laughs> um, you know, it's Maybe you should have played Oberon again. <laughs> now? <laughs> 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 well, your first big on-screen role didn't come until you were in your 40s <laughs> when you were cast as Captain Jean-Luc Picard <laughs> in Star Trek The Next Generation. And you write about the exact moment that you realized you were taking yourself <laughs> maybe a bit too seriously <laughs> that Sorry. first season Sorry. in 1987. So what, what happened? He was a leader, and I have played a lot of leaders on stage, Shakespearean leaders, some of them. And so I, I thought about that and brought that into the role. But I think it made me too stiff, too upright, too um, uh, unbending, and uh -huh. not as, as free uh -huh. as the, the rest of the cast were. And I was astonished at how loose and improvisational Jonathan and Brent and mm -hmm. Marina <clears throat> And Gates could be, and Michael. But then uh, one day, um, <laughs> I called this meeting and I said, look, 
Um, I think we've got a problem here. Uh, we're, we're, ha we're having too much disruption on the set in front of the camera. <laughs> I, we, I think we've got to take this all much more seriously. There's too much fooling around. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and one of my colleagues said, oh, Patrick, we've got to have some fun. And I said, we are not here to have fun. <laughs> And I think I might have thumped the table. <laughs> and they all just laughed. They did. Yeah. And then what did you do when they laughed? Um, I walked out. <laughs> I did. I was embarrassed. You walked out. No, I didn't. Stormed, Stormed out. Stormed out. Well, Whoopi, yeah, do you yeah. remember Patrick being very serious on set? Well, by the time I got there the second year. Oh, yeah. so he had, had chilled out a little bit. They straightened him out. <laughs> because I'm only going to call you Sir Patrick. Okay. <laughs> You've crossed paths with countless famous people, huge celebrities, actors throughout your career, but you admit that you're not necessarily up to date on pop culture at times. And you write about what was a bit of an embarrassing but hilarious run-in you had with Sting in the 1980s. <laughs> we were uh, working, and one day I heard the cast excitedly talking about someone called Sting was, was joining the show, and he, he'd been cast in it. And it meant nothing to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then this gorgeous, nice guy turned up one day, so relaxed and easy and friendly. And, and uh, a couple of days afterwards, um, I, I went over to sit next to him. We were waiting for lighting to be finished or the scene <laughs> to be dressed. And uh, I said, so, um, uh, I understand you're a musician. <laughs> and he said, yep, yep. And I said, uh, you, uh, what, what do you play? And he said, I, I play bass. And I said, you know, I've never understood why a musician should want to carry that huge <laughs> instrument around. Him. You know, why not just play a flute or something? He said. And he, he, he laughed and said, no, 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 not a double bass, a bass guitar. <laughs> oh, I said, right, good, good. <laughs> and uh, and do, do you play in a band? And he said, yeah, yeah. And I said, uh, what, what, what are they? He said, well, I play with the police band. The police. And I said, you play in a police band? <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it's humiliating. It's perfect. But I, it's I perfect. can proudly tell you, Sting tells this story himself. <laughs> and, and I don't regret it. Listen, it is always wonderful when you come. It's always great to see you, it's great to talk to you, it's great to hear you talk. Our thanks to Sir Patrick Stewart. Yes. The book is called Making It So. It's out today. And you know what, y'all? You, you know what? You're all so good. <laughs>